But the other thing is that it's home to a very particular type of microorganism. Tell, tell me what we're hoping to see today. So tonight we're hoping to see bioluminescent plankton. And so it'll be emitting a little blue light when we disturb the water. And it looks a little bit like sparks. So the Irish word for it is Krushnafarga, which means embers of the sea. So we're just trying to disturb the water. So this plankton, it lights up because of, as a defense mechanism. So when you're disturbing it, it thinks you're trying to eat it. And it's lighting up to try and attract something bigger to come and eat you. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, it's so beautiful. Researchers have been studying the area around Loch Hine since the late 19th century. And today I'm here to meet Dr. Tom Doyle, a marine biologist from University College Cork. Tom, Tell me what it is that causes the bioluminescence that we see here in Loch Hine. It's a single-celled organism called Noctiluca scintillans. Within that cell, you've got hundreds of thousands of these little vacuoles, and in, inside each of those, you have these chemicals. One's the luciferin, and the other is luciferase, and the two of those together, um, with oxygen, can produce light. And what's incredible is that it, it's an organism that does it. So if you think about it, it is a bit like a, the organism has a superpower. So it can produce its own light. You know, when you look at plankton here, we've got the water here flowing by us. It's full of plankton. You've got phytoplankton in it, which are the plant cells. And then you've got the zooplankton, which are the animal little single-celled organisms. But not to look at is somewhere in between because it behaves like an animal, but it's, it's uh, evolutionary history is more like a plant. How does it behave like an animal? It can't photosynthesize. So what it does is actually it feeds on other phytoplankton or feeds on other zooplankton. So it's actually, it's, it's quite a predator. And actually it's one of the reasons why I like Noctiluca is that it has a tentacle. I work a lot on jellyfish and this guy has a little tentacle as well. So I kind of, a bit of an honorary jellyfish in some ways, but it's only, it's really, really small. They're only half a millimeter. The Noctiluca is trying to protect itself and that's why it's emitting that light. Often when we see it, you see it on a, on a beach where the waves are breaking and it's got all the Noctiluca in the water. And it's that physical, uh, or mechanical stress on the cells that actually cause it to emit light because they can't, they can't see. So they can't tell the difference between, uh, you know, any turbulence in the water or, you know, a boat going through the water as well. I'm in Cork to find out how photonics or the signs of light is one of the key technologies of the 21st century. Professor Stefan Anderson Engels is a vice director of the Irish Photonic Integration Centre. Stefan, what is photonics? So photonics is the type of technology we have that really uses photons to carry the signal. You can compare it with electronics that uses electrons to carry the signal. So, so that would be electrical current. Photonics that is light. And photonics is going to be, or is one of the key technologies of the 21st century. It is. I would again like to compare it with electronics. That was the past century's big invention with integrated circuits that made computers and mobile phones and everything possible. Now we can have photonics integrated circuit. That means that you can combine photonic sensors and devices, communication systems with electronics to make it really compact. And that means we will really revolutionize many things. As we saw earlier with the crystal jellyfish, the natural world provides fascinating examples of luminescence. And researchers are using that knowledge to develop light-based technologies with medical applications. We are working on several projects. One of the projects we are working on is to try to label tissue samples, biopsies from females mainly having breast cancer. So we are trying then to look at biomarkers, specific molecules, that are generated on the surface of the, these cells to see whether we can label those. The research team at Tyndall are creating nanoparticles that when illuminated with laser light provide a specific luminescent signal used to detect cancer cells inside the human body. We wanted to differentiate breast cancer cells from the normal cells by using photoluminescence. In our case, we use uh, biomarkers, which are small, small, tiny particles. We target the cancer cells 
when we get to target cells, we get different lights by using the microscope. So we can differentiate cancer cells than the normal cells. Nanoparticles are giving the bright signal on the microscope. We have loads of cancer cells here and here. 